Remember the time you were on Xbox or PlayStation or Steam and an achievement bar just popped out of nowhere, but instead of telling you what you did, it just said, give me money to see your accomplishment? Oh uh, yeah, me neither. Hey Summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be discussing Eternals. Eternals are one of the more controversial things that Riot has conceptualized, mostly due to the fact that they are asking for money. After heavy criticism from the League community, Riot reeled it back and recently unveiled the changes that they've made to the Eternal system to be a little bit closer to the community's expectations. But really quick before we jump right into it, today's question of the day is, what stat would you like to see tracked on your favorite champion? I think it'd be pretty cool to see how many kills I've gotten or secured for my ADC while playing brand. Let us know your answers in the comments down below. And also before we get started, if you want to improve your League of Legends skills, make sure you check out our website, proguides.com for a challenger coach. So, Eternals, <laughs> what are they and why does the community seem so harsh about it? Eternals are a set of stack tracking metrics for each champion pitched to us as an opportunity to flex our incredible feats in the game. Basically, it's Riot's new achievement system. Unlike any other achievement system though, you have to pay for it. Riot wants us to spend money on the kind of stat tracking system that's free on every other major gaming platform. And herein lies the source of all the backlash. Not only that, they did get rid of the old stat tracking in the legacy client, then came back and gave us a ranked stats tab that works less than I do. And I'm unemployed. <laughs> uh, and when they did something cool with the year review stats page with all those analytics, they stopped doing them so that they could present us with Eternals. I've been playing this game for about eight years and I've never heard of a single soul ponder to themselves. Ha ah, gee, I wonder how many times I've bumped in an enemy with Anivia's wall. I'd honestly be more curious about how many toxic ally recalls I disrupted with Anivia's wall, but it's something, I guess. As I said before, Riot is pitching this to us as a paid product instead of just a service because it's not just stats. Riot knows that we like to trash talk and show off, so they've attempted to market Eternals as such. Your stats will be visible on the back of your loading screen cards after you progress enough with your mastery, and it will get augmented. And you'll see some callouts in the game when you hit a certain milestone. When Eternals were initially announced, people complained that the callouts were just distracting and in some cases gave you information that you shouldn't have gotten, like a skill shot sent in a bush and your Eternal ticked up. Supposedly, those problems are fixed now, and there might be a way to disable these callouts from happening, which is a good step. The other more minor concern players had was worrying about players making questionable decisions that just were used to farm up their Eternals, but ultimately, there's not much that can be done about that. Anyway, credit where credit is due. I legitimately don't think Eternals is a bad idea, and I think it's a pretty neat concept. I just don't think anyone was petitioning for it, but it's fine, and I, I don't think that anyone would say no to some free stats. Keyword there being free, like they are in every other game, if I didn't make that clear enough. The problem is that they expect you to pay for them. Naturally, this caused a huge outcry from the community when the concept was first released, on top of the original iteration of Eternals feeling too vague and generic. They were less about mastery over a champion and more about quantity of games played, so it didn't feel like there was a true reflection of player skill. Kind of like, oh I don't know, the mastery system? <laughs> According to Riot, the other major complaint came from people who wanted to purchase Eternals for all of their champs, but obviously didn't want to shell out that kind of money. So now Riot is back listening to our feedback. Here again, I offer them partial kudos. Not because the changes they made completely fixed the issue, but because most of the feedback I saw was just straight up harassment. And I know at least a few of Riot's employees had to parse through the bottomless criticism and search for some kind of way to make things better. As long as that way wasn't making Eternals free, of course. Riot has come back with their list of changes, however, and newly updated metrics are a little bit more interesting, as they promised though they are still sort of underwhelming. But what about the core issue, the paywall? Here, too, Riot kind of listened. Now, instead of Eternals being exclusively purchasable with RP, they divided them into two types and into two different sets. The first set is called the Starter Series. This is meant to be our intro into Eternals with more straightforward stats. The second set will be Series 1 and will release with a focus on more niche-related champion metrics. The two classifications of Eternals within these sets are common and unique. Common Eternals are more generic things that apply to champions across the board like takedowns, epic monster killed, and stuff like that. 
Unique Eternals are just that, stats that are unique to each champion. Anivia displacing enemies with her wall, Ash hitting ults from a certain distance, and hopefully there's something for my friend to see how many ults he's missed as Orn. Learning to hit your skill shots, Travi. What Riot has elected to do as an answer to the whole why are we paying for this question is to make Eternals in the starter series purchasable for 2500 blue essences. That way they're still accessible without spending RP. I actually think that this is an okay approach for Eternals as a whole since veteran players don't really care about burning their stockpiles of blue essences. As for how they're responding to the problem of players with larger champ pools wanting Eternals, Riot has created a series pass that will unlock every Eternal for every champion. The starter series pass will cost 14,750 blue essences or 1350 RP. The series one pass on the other hand can't be purchased with blue essence and it'll run 5,850 RP. Riot has highlighted that these passes as being a major savings deal with that 90% discount and while I guess that in the context of all this, it is nice of them, it is almost patronizing. Third and final props to Riot for coming up with the idea of paid achievements, something that even EA hasn't really capitalized on yet. Public opinion of Riot over the past couple of years has been a roller coaster, and most of the time, I don't feel like I'm tall enough to ride, and I'm pretty freaking tall, I'm like six foot five. Sometimes they knock it out of the park though with stuff like Clash or other game announcements for the 10 year anniversary but other times they just feel completely disconnected from the community. Eternals are the biggest case of the latter, since Riot has put out the original system for those glorified white and gold chromas they call prestige skins. On that subject, the word prestige means something that is respected because it was earned through some kind of noteworthy performance and achievement. It's just not a direct synonym for expensive or grindy. The irony here is now that they have Eternals, a system for tracking your accomplishments, it's not even tied into earning you the skins named after being accomplished. If that were the case, I could see you paying for Eternals because it would at least be earning something instead of just logging games into the abyss. Now they've announced their reworked Eternals and people still dislike it and criticize it because Riot wants us to pay for something that no other game makes us pay for. Like I've mentioned already, we just want the stat page that's already in the client to work like it should. And we just want the client to work like it should so we don't have to dodge every 10th game when our runes don't pull up for us and we have to change them. And so I could finally add you guys on League of Legends and play with you guys. But anyway, having some stats and cutely mastery flair is so far down the list of things that the League of Legends community is so vocal about. And it just seems silly that they thought Eternals would be received positively. It costs $45 of RP to buy the Series 1 pass, and if you live in other regions, the conversion rate might be closer to $50. And no, of course, not everyone is going to get the whole pass, and it isn't that outrageous if you just buy one or two. It's just that the service provided doesn't really strike the community as worth paying for. And I don't blame Riot for trying to make some money moves, as the cool kids say. And Eternals are just a nice thought, but going about them this way is just alienating its player base. Do I get an Eternal for just finishing this rant? Maybe, but who knows? Maybe that'll also cost RP. <laughs> All right, that concludes this video, and thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, guys, make sure to check out ProGuys.com to take your game to the next level. We have so much content there, and we want you guys to check it out. And also make sure to stay tuned at our YouTube channel, because we are always releasing videos like this. Until next time, good luck on the Rift Summoners, and I'll see you guys on the flip. That's what also, that's also what cool kids say. My, my little cousin told me, so. <laughs>